this video, I'll show you how and from this Shoot this Castlevania has always been one of my favorite video game series. The first game is the one I probably finished most times in my life. Maybe my favorite thing about those games is their music. The soundtracks in those games are awesome. The first game is just filled with good songs. But when it comes to NES Castlevanias, the third game usually gets the most attention as it had everything the first one had and more, with different paths to choose from and additional characters to play with. Castlevania III Dracula's Curse is so influential that the first two seasons of the Netflix Castlevania show are based on it. When I was a kid, the only Castlevania game I had in cartridge form was the first one, the CCA release by the way. I never played the second one, and the third I only played through rental, so I never had the proper time to beat it. So when I saw the Castlevania Anniversary Collection bundle on Steam, it seemed like a good opportunity to get to actually play the other NES Castlevania games, plus all the other ones that are included. This compilation is actually a bundle of emulated ROMs. The emulation quality is ok, and you have some display options to give the game a more authentic look, but nothing beats playing those games on a CRT TV. And that was something I could actually do. Since I already acquired the ROMs legally, it was all a matter of extracting them from the Steam game, loading them on my flash cart, and playing them on my old NES clone. The extraction process is really simple. I will leave a link in the description with the instructions and tools needed for the job. Once extracted and loaded in my flash cart, it was time to give those games a try. And that's when I stumbled at my first hurdle. The first two games worked fine, but Castlevania's three graphics had glitches. At first it didn't look that bad. But once you got past the very first door and started climbing the stairs, the game got unplayable. There's nothing wrong with the ROMs. The problem is my flashcard, and possibly its compatibility with my clone console. I'll explain. The NES and the Famicom before it are very old pieces of hardware, and they were designed to do much less than they were doing by the time Castlevania 3 was released. For instance, it was originally designed to deal with games no bigger than 40 kilobits. That's why the first batch of games is really simple compared to the later ones. The original Super Mario Bros. fit that 40k limit, and is really a feat of engineering for being able to store so much content in such a small space. But space was not the only limitation. When it comes to graphics, for instance, the stock hardware is only capable of doing horizontal or vertical scrolling at one time. Diagonal scrolling as seen in Super Mario Bros. 3 is simply impossible for the NES stock hardware. The way developers got around those limitations was to add extra chips to the cartridges that would expand the console's capabilities. Those chips are called Memory Management Controllers, or MMCs, and are known in the emulation community as mappers. Castlevania 3 is one of those games equipped with a mapper, an MMC5 to be exact, and that is Nintendo's most advanced MMC. When you use a flashcard to play games on the NES or some clone, the flashcard must not only provide a ROM file to the console, but also emulate the mappers required by the game, as they were included originally in the cartridge. But the emulation of such mappers isn't fully supported by some flashcards, especially when it comes to advanced ones such as the MMC5. Castlevania 3 is known for not working on every flashcard, and it seems to be the case with the one I own. But Castlevania 3, like many other Western releases, is actually a part of the original Famicom release. Akumajo Densetsu. The Famicom game used a different mapper, the VRC6, developed by Konami and first used in this game. So maybe this mapper is supported by my flashcard, and I can play the Japanese version instead, which was also included in the Castlevania Anniversary Collection. Yes, it works without any graphical glitches, but there's something else different here. The music sounds a bit strange, and the reason is again related to the mapper used. The VRC6 was designed by the game's audio programmer Hidenori Maezawa, and among other things, the chip added three extra sound channels to the Famicom. Let me explain this a bit more. 
The Famicom sound is produced by an audio processing unit, or APU, inside the processor. It has five channels. Two pulse wave channels, usually responsible for the melodies, one triangle wave channel, usually responsible for the bass line, one noise channel, used mostly for percussion sounds, and one DPCM channel that plays digitized samples. The song I'm using for this example is from Castlevania 3, and it uses all five channels on the NES. But the original Akumajo Densetsu music features three extra channels provided by the VRC6 chip, two square wave channels and one sawtooth channel. These extra channels are provided by the cartridge and are mixed to the main sound inside it. The Famicom could do this audio expansion by default, but the NES couldn't due to how it was designed. When you play a game such as Akumajo Densetsu on an NES with a flashcard, you won't hear the expanded audio even if the flashcard supports the mapper. That is, unless you modify the hardware. That also applies to NES clones such as mine. So the music you're hearing here is actually only the main NES channels, without the extra ones. To add those, I had to modify my console. Since there are plenty of tutorials telling you how to do this mod, I decided to try it myself. The problem is, you will find lots of tutorials for modding original NES consoles. But what about NES clones? That is a bit harder. I found tutorials for modding the Gradient Phantom system and found a tutorial for modding the CCE Turbo game, the successor of my own top game. At first, I thought the only difference between the top game and the turbo game was the controller with the turbo function for the A and B buttons. But it turns out the circuit board is also different. So I had to study the circuit board a little bit to modify my console. The usual NES mod consists in putting a resistor between the pins 3 and 9 of the expansion port. The top loader version doesn't have an expansion port, so the resistor is applied between pin 51 on the cartridge slot and the audio output. The mods I've seen for the Phantom system and the Turbo game are similar to the one for the top loader, in the sense that you use a pin and a cartridge slot, 54 in this case, but the other end of the connection is actually the CPU's pin 1 or 2, from where the audio from the APU comes. So at first, I tried using the same resistor value and placement as the Turbo Game mod, between pin 54 on the cartridge slot and pin 1 on the CPU, but it didn't work. The recommended value for the Turbo Game was 330 ohms, but going as low as 150, as in the Phantom System mod, wouldn't give the right mix. I also tried connecting the resistor between pin 54 and the audio output, adjusting the resistance to a higher value. I even used the potentiometer to test different values. Somewhere around 33k gave the best results, but the noise channel was somewhat affected and sounded low when doing this, and the overall sound lacked bass. The best results I got was from connecting pin 54 on the cartridge slot and pin 1 on the CPU with no resistor whatsoever but the expanded audio was a bit lower than the original sound. Thankfully, the flashcard firmware has an options menu that allows you to adjust the volume for the different expanded audio mappers supported. Bumping the volume a bit did the trick, and here's a before and after comparison. Here's a brief comparison of the sounds in Castlevania 3 and Akumajo Densetsu, directly from my modded clone console. The nice thing about this mod is that it enables expanded audio for all games that support it. To give you an example, I have a Brazilian copy of Rolling Thunder released by Gradiente. It is the same as the NES version released by Tengen in the US. 
The Famicom version uses the Namco 163 chip and has an improved soundtrack. I must say the NES version has a soft spot in my heart, as it was the one I learned to love as a kid, but the Famicom one is closer to the original arcade release. Here is a brief comparison. Many other games support expanded audio, but that goes beyond the scope of this video. I hope you enjoyed this, and if you did, please consider subscribing to the channel. I'll keep posting more video game related videos, but you should also expect to see music videos anytime. Thanks for watching.